It just flew off the ground. Heaven forbid that he should have pulled Sumo. Yeah, yeah, because that'd be totally well, his, his stance was pretty. That's illegal, illegal man. <laughs> That's not a deadlift. <laughs> I know. I've been told it, many it's times. It's cheating. His stance was pretty moderate too for a strong man. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was pretty narrow. Yeah. And Arnold's like, freaking out in the background. You see that? Arnold's like to the right. Oh, yeah. So excited! Yeah. It's amazing. The fact that Arnold was there. Yeah, he was so excited. Should wipe out BSN. any of this other bullshit. Yeah, People should amazing. suck a dick. Look for BSN products at bodybuilding.com. Alongside Silent Mike and Jim McDee, here's your host, oh. Mark Bell. Oh, Smelly. Smelly's just now getting his headphones on. Hey, now. Oh, yeah. there he is. Can you hear okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm Are you here. not plugged in? No, he's plugged I am. in. Oh. He's plugged in. I thought that was just yeah, no, I'm unplugged. He's on a Butt longer. Plug. He's a long, on a longer cord because I had to re. Do oh. everything here. I'm on a longer leash than just you. in case you want to run around. Yeah, I'm yeah. tied down. Mm-hmm. Whatever. We were, we were talking about the fact that there's apparently a lot of controversy going on in, in social media over powerlifting right now, and none of us really know what it's about. Well, nor do we care now that there's so much social media? There's like Facebook, there's Vine, there's Pinterest, there's Instagram and Twitter. We don't know where it started, and there's still like some forums. Yeah, if, if it started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, <laughs> now we're here. If there were powerlifters on Pinterest bitching about other people, there's, other powerlifters is an issue. There's, there's some powerlifters on Interest. I, uh, I, Pinterest. I, I, I know that there are. I know. <laughs> no, there's there's some interest in Pinterest? Some. No, no way. Brandon Lilly checking out the new latest yeah. recipes yeah. on um, Pinterest. How to make your own curtains. And Sam shit. Bird on Pinterest. Yeah. Follow him, yeah. Ser- seriously. <laughs> see, he has some good I, shit. I, yeah. I could actually see that one. Yeah, see, some, he's got some, some, uh, some sh- choice clothing, some nice accessories, and some home project stuff that's very good. I, I, I highly recommend checking out Sam Bird on Pinterest. I'm hey going to favorite that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know what that means. I don't. I don't I've never been on Pinterest either. And I'm old. You are old. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what any of that means. Pinterest. I don't know what it is. No, I don't what know what it? it's like. Social media. Uh, yeah, it's a social media. Ask your wife. That's that's. Isn't there other similar new social media thing going on? Oh, what Something was your brother else? telling us about Meerkat? Yeah, I don't know what I've that is. I've never heard of that. For, so Meerkat. It, it just like announces creepy. where you are. No, I think announces. it's a video. I think it's like a webcam through Twitter, which sounds yeah. really creepy. But Boar is like, yeah, you could run it through Twitter and like just. You can do like a QA and a or some yeah, shit. Yeah, your whole know, workout so or something. I don't know. Boar sent it in like an email too, I think. So that made it even more confusing. Oh, here we are on Pinterest looking up chocolates. No, oh, would you look at that? <laughs> dark chocolate. If it's dark chocolate, it doesn't add body fat, right? Yeah, yeah. Antioxidants. Cancel that out. Yeah. They cancel out all the calories. Helps with fat burning. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, oh, my God. He right is there. there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I told you. <laughs> I knew, it, I knew it was going to be a selfie. Ooh, look, he's <laughs> doing uh, like bedroom eyes down there in the corner. I yeah, like it's that. like curtains, dark chocolate, like uh, fresh strawberries, and then fucking jacked ass sandbags. He's uh, <laughs> flexing he's in the mirror. Pretty goddamn jacked. <laughs> yeah, he's huge. <laughs> I think, however, this is not him. This is somebody posting a picture of him that he posted himself. Oh. Hey, is now. that recently? He's huge. He, I don't know. Bottom right looks more like him right now. This is, yeah. Yeah, that looks like the magic he hit up a, uh He hit up a pretty good deadlift uh, a few weeks ago, I saw. What did he squat in, uh, the uh, cage? Training. A 900. Yeah. Yeah, he hit a 900-pound squat. Yeah, he's a uh, strong mofo. He, like, I'm came a- into our booth at the Arnold, and all of us were so busy. He just, like, started standing there handing out magazines. And <laughs> it said, was a nightmare. He said hello was... to, like, nobody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just comes in the booth and starts handing out magazines. I couldn't like, even wave. Yeah, none of us got a wave. chance to say hi to him. So funny. He was there for like 15 minutes just passing out Power Magazine. Yeah, shit was biz, eh? So what's the controversy? Fucking Eddie Hall wearing straps to deadlift a thousand That pounds? might be one thing. I don't know. It seems like that there's more than one thing. You got Brandon. If it ain't one thing, it's a motherfucking other. Brandon Lilly disavowing everybody. I'll, uh, I'll ask Kim right now because Kim posted about it. Okay. Twitter Kim. on blast. I, I, Speaking I, of lifting straps, we got, a cheat. We got a, <laughs> our very own cheater in the house today, Chris Duffin. That's right. In the hizzy. <laughs> Chris Duffin is one of the greatest cheaters of all time when it comes to <laughs> lifting straps. 900 pounds for two, right, I believe, or 1.5 reps or something like that? Well, you know, it's only like 300 pounds because of the straps. So. Yeah, right. yeah, deadlift so bar too, right? Yeah. And if deadlift it, bar. Beard. Sumo. Sumo. I did. Oh. Uh, it was sumo. It, it almost. <laughs> it, it was sumo. So it wasn't security. Really, it wasn't security. a real deadlift. It almost yeah. didn't even happen. It, it basically it didn't. Wow. So, it pretty much wiped it off of existence. If there was a hate button, I'd hit it. <laughs> I'd hit. I'd hit that hate button right now. That's what social media needs. Not a sumo, dislike, but a hate, a hate, hate button. button. What kind of what kind of person does that? <laughs> It's so disrespectful towards powerlifting. <laughs> that uh, this is I, what's I wrong just, with the I was, sport. I was trying to insult everyone. 
It, that's what it, it was just a low it blow. To Don't worry, society. I've been, I've been told how bad this was many times. So oh, okay. Guess, so you, yes, I've been. So you're not doing sumo anymore. <laughs> Well, <laughs> and I you're not am, using straps I am a, anymore. I am a cheater. So. There's a there's a very popular <laughs> YouTube channel that uh, describes pulling sumo like eating butthole. Oh yeah. yeah What's I your thoughts that. on that? <laughs> he said that it's everybody used phrase. to do it, but no one talked about it. But now everybody does it, and they're okay with it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's, it sounds... I, I, I'm going to no comment on both, okay? <laughs> <laughs> just in just total fear that your wife may listen to the show. Just, uh, yeah, just, I don't know nothing about nothing. I don't know nothing about nothing. Yeah, I, we, I haven't heard anything. I don't know. <laughs> we don't encourage wives listening to this show, although we do have a pretty significant female listener. There's six. <laughs> it's doubled. There used to be three, know, and now there's six. We called them out and said we only have three all ladies I, all listening. All I know is you're not supposed to be sharing the secrets of the pros. So Right. It's, it's, oh. it's, so no butthole secrets. Secrets on here. Fuck, I hate That's when what I you're telling me. The, I hate Those when I share secret. the secret of the secrets of the pros. Speaking of buttholes, we might as well start out with a poop story. You got any good poop stories to share with us? Any good blowouts <laughs> of any kind? Uh, you know, lifting or, or otherwise? Uh, you, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> oh, here we go. You've had uh, it's been a while since we've had a good poop yeah, story. Yeah, it's been a long time. Hashtag poop story. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, you know Justin Randall, right? I, oh, okay. Spark, I love spark, where spark, this is going. Sparky. <laughs> Sparky. I love where this is going. Already. So, uh, I went up to uh, to Washington to do a meet, and uh, I'm cutting weight because I'm, I'm a cheater. And uh, we were yeah. already, we've already got that. Yeah, so. from, from 275. <laughs> it was like 280, actually. But, and you, you know. don't have to actually make weight because you know the whoever's running the meet, right? Y- exactly. Yeah. It's, you know, you just Use some it, fake you scale. Just, you I know, got you. Oh, my name's Chris, you know, and it's, it's all good. Yeah. But So anyway, I'm cutting weight, and my stomach is bothering me, but nothing can come out because there's no water in oh my, my system, God. right? So I'm just, I finish, you know, I go all the way, I cut weight, I get up there, I weigh in, 220 on the nose, and uh, I go down, start eating. And I've got, you know, well, let's say 20 pounds of food and water i got to take in. And uh, then it hits me a couple hours in. I'm like, oh, yeah, my stomach wasn't doing good. Yeah. <laughs> and now I've eaten 20 or 30 pounds of stuff. <sighs> and uh, so that starts running through me. <laughs> and, and, and now it's going through, and I'm going, oh, my God, i still got to do the meat tomorrow. i got to keep my weight up. <sighs> right. So I keep eating. <laughs> did you, did you take like I keep a, did, drinking? Did you take and, like a laxative or something to help you make weight or anything like that? No, I I, I think I had something bef- right, bef- uh, right before. Like, like I said, I, I my stomach would like started getting in knots before I started mm-hmm. the the last day water drop. Right, and then it just couldn't go anywhere because th- I had nothing in me. Right. Oh, it went somewhere. <laughs> and so uh, so I spent the whole night, you know, moving. 20 pounds worth of food You're right. through my system. Jesus. So I was up all night. It, Randall was staying with me. And uh, I'm glad it was him and not my wife because I will. I wouldn't have a wife. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> She'd be like, you know what? You sicko. I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> so, so, Thanks so for by, nothing. By, by the time morning runs around, um, Randall gets up and he, he's going to the bathroom. I'm like, don't use the shower. <laughs> because I can't use the toilet anymore. Oh Just my so god! So you know, <laughs> I don't. I can't sit down anymore. <laughs> I can't sit down doing things from a standing position. <laughs> and so, it's burning your legs too. Like much. I said, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a wife. Um, there was a very healthy tip left. So I, I go down to go down to the meet, and I'm like, you know. I can't sit down. I'm pretty sure I can't squat 800 pounds today. <laughs> <laughs> I got in my truck and I drove home. Oh, I, it was. I, I actually made weight. That's I it. didn't bomb out of the meat, but I didn't do the meat. There was just. I was just. I mean, that is a lot of you were, uh, product to move through <laughs> your Shit's system. Creek without a paddle. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, there's a good chance that uh, uh, Mark or uh, Randall will never ever stay with me. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Was, I, uh, I don't blame. I'm, I'm not going to go into details, but it was pretty low levels of depravity. Uh, oh my my heart. So. Man, if that was the outcome you were looking for, you certainly uh, found a way to achieve it. <laughs> <laughs> kabuki. The Kabuki warrior fucking tearing it up. <laughs> the Kaduki. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Holy shit. Literally. <laughs> brutal. But I'm brutal. So anyway, speaking of cheating, <laughs> you've uh, successfully hit an 881-pound squat uh, in a contest, which is a world record and also uh, revered as one of the greatest squats of all time, in my opinion, anyway. I would say it's uh, top five. I think you mentioned it was top five uh, in regards to uh, the coefficient, mm-hmm. right? And uh, just tell us tell us a little bit about that day. Tell us a little about your preparation, you know, going into the meet. And, uh, you know, um, how, how long have you been powerlifting to kind of get to that uh, get to that moment? Well, I've been powerlifting for 15 years and... 
training probably since like 1990-ish or so. So it but took a while. It, a little while, you know. <laughs> I, I love it when uh, people Overnight walk, sensation. You know, yeah. people contact me online. They're like, you look great, or walk into the gym. How long does it take to get like that? Yeah, how do I get abs? Is, like is that a, like six months or like, like a how year? How long you got? Uh, <laughs> yeah. A <laughs> couple decades. A <laughs> couple decades of outworking everybody that you know. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, so leading into the meet, I, uh, I was actually – doing prepping for another meet and I really wanted to know like where my strength was with the weight cut I just recently had surgery on my arm so I couldn't deadlift or wasn't expecting to be able to deadlift heavy at that point I hadn't been deadlifting in training and uh, but I wanted to see how the rest of it came together and I felt really good with my squat um, for sure and uh, I've had this that four times body weight squat in my head for a long time yeah so it's been a huge like you know just Big goal out there for a long time for me. It was the heaviest four times body weight squat of all time, right? That's correct. Yeah. And um, so so we're going into the meet, and uh, I worked up to uh, on my second attempt. I think I hit like 850 or 860. And it was a little slow, but felt fairly good. And uh, I'm like, you know, I know where I'm at for the meet. I'm actually done. So I, I walked over to uh, to my, co- my, my training partner and co-partner with the gym, uh, Rudy, and you know, and I said, you know, that, that, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to pass on my third. Mm-hmm. He's like, are you sure? And I'm like, well, let me think about that. <laughs> Cause at this big meet, I'm probably gonna, I want to go for the total. Right. And I'm probably not going to be going for just an all out everything I've got just a squat. I got you. Right. And, uh, so we always I, suggest to our lifters whenever they're thinking about bowing out, we always put a number in anyway, cause you can always, you can always cancel it right before you go, yeah. you know? So, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, if there's one time, you know, at the point I was thinking this is my last 220, you know, that, that next meet was going to be my last 220 right. meet ever because my body weight just has been continuing to climb. And, uh, and so I went, well, this is, if I'm going to hit it, it's either today or never. Right. This is my one shot, my only shot. <laughs> right. And, uh, but really that's what was going through my head. And, uh, so I just, I mean, it just. You know, I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck just start standing up. And then it just went over the top of my head. You know, it was a, they just kind of started standing on end. I could feel the adrenals, you know, kicking in. Right. And uh, so I had someone run up to the table and put in 400 kilo. Right. Um, and uh, I walked out there. And that 881, I mean, it was it was a legitimate squat. I mean, it's, I, you know, I've had a lot of haters. Right through my time, but I've had very few people that have ever come forward and anybody saying that was not to depth, that was a shitty squat or whatever. Mm. It was, I sunk it, right, and I came up good, clean, and fast. And uh, it was actually better than uh, better than my second attempt. With it looked like you could have done more for sure. So, um, so I mean, I was just ecstatic. I might even be more proud of my hops afterwards. If you watch, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some some big jumps in there. I saw you (laughs) you jumping up like a maniac. So, uh, but when you did, when you actually went down, when you actually did the squat, you know, you said you, uh, you know, felt fired up going into the squat. Did you? uh, Did it not feel that hard just because you were so freaking fired up, or was it eight hundred (laughs) eighty-one pounds? I can't even tell you what it felt like. Okay, I mean, it was so just over the top in the moment that. I don't even remember what it felt like. Right, and up until that moment, you have it. You hadn't uh, broken an all-time uh, world record like that before, have you? Uh, no. Yeah, so that must have been different. Well, actually, for you. no. Well, actually, I did. So I had it already. I had the all-time for the squat at eight sixty. Oh, okay. Um, which was, um, it was. I think Sam Bird hit like an eight fifty four or something, and you hit the eight sixty. Is that right? Exactly. So it was actually the record was like an eight fifteen from one of the Russian dudes. Right. And then Sam uh, did a uh, USA USA <laughs> hit, USA hit eight fifty four in uh, Australia the year before. Um, he ended up bombing out at the meet, um, but but his squat right. was in. So he oh, had, oh, right, so right. it went from eight fifteen to eight fifty four. Right. And. Uh, and yeah, so then I I had reset I I'd, I'd set it at like eight fifty eight or eight sixty yeah. uh, earlier in the year. And Sam Bird is an animal. Have you guys had a chance to get on the platform together? We we did. Just we actually, in Australia. We we actually competed against each other in Australia. Um, and you know Sam was uh, a big part of me being able to to make my weight cut at that at that meet. So I uh, I had a lot of weight. To How cut. so? Um. So I came in heavier than I expected to be. Right. And uh, uh, both, uh, so I ended up meeting up with uh, uh, Sam and um, 
Brantley Thornton, who had the all-time yeah. record at 181. Right. Yeah, he's a savage, too. And uh, we I love were, that name, too. We Brantley were... <laughs> Thornton. He's from, like, Kentucky or yeah. something, right? <laughs> it is a badass name. Yeah. So so uh, we, we all started uh, cutting weight sauna together. And, um, you know, <laughs> I like where this is going. <laughs> uh, romantic, sets a mood. Yeah, guys, romantic uh, spa in Australia. <laughs> yeah. I'm picturing you in leather chaps. Uh, Losing and weight. A cowboy ten, hat. Losing actually, weight 10 cc's It's pretty funny. There's, there's this photo that just won't die, and my wife hates it. <laughs> and, of course, her whole family's seen it, and they love ridiculing me about it because I'm uh, – anyway, we're, we're, the three of us are down there cutting weight. I just stepped into the sauna, and I had I, – I just had my skibbies on, and uh, – uh, Dan Green and his wife come down there, right. and I, I walk out, and next thing you know, Sparkle's got a camera and shoots this picture, <laughs> and it's like everybody's standing there, and I'm standing in like my my speedo underwear, right. which I, like my white ha- wife hates them, but <laughs> but I was trying to wear a minimalist underwear for cutting weight, yeah. and uh, <laughs> fantastic. So, that's that's so, a good so, uh, so it's a, a good Google I photo. A, I think it's a really embarrassing photo for for her anyway. I <laughs> me, I don't know, I don't care, but <laughs> <laughs> that's great. But uh, Sam was so, helping you lose weight? Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, Brantley ended up, he, he kind of bagged out early. He was unable, had some cramping issues. Uh, he ended up going up to the 198s. Sam was cutting to the 198s. But uh, he just, he, again, it was too much for him. Um, so he stopped, but he stayed with me basically all night. So, so I ended up in the sauna uh, for an all-nighter. And, uh, you know, he, he just kept me going, kept me motivated. And, and uh, he actually stayed cutting weight with me just to keep me going right um even, even though, though he's he knew eating. he wasn't going to make it all the way to 198 wow. <laughs> right. and um you know it was my, the first time i've actually spent any time with sam yeah together. and i don't know you if know, we need to say anything more about it, sam bird than that right there it that's was a, it that's was amazing it was, it was pretty incredible and uh i wouldn't have been able to do it without him yeah and then so yeah we ended up competing against each other because he didn't make it to the 198s but uh, you know that's pretty cool. But I think I, you know I, from that experience, I, I consider Sam a very good friend and yeah, of just an incredible amount of respect for him. So yeah, you know uh, I think uh, you know uh, from one world record holder to another, you know only you guys can probably really understand that high level. And you know he was that's probably why he you know stayed there with you, just realizing how what a fucking bitch it is to to drop that weight and to be able to uh, to be able to perform at a high level. And what is it we say about that? Real recognize real. There you go. Real recognize real. <laughs> we don't even know what that means. But we say it <laughs> continuously because, uh, yeah, uh, Matt Vincent screwed that up a couple weeks ago here. So we uh, we're keeping it alive. So you Whatever smash the, the uh, you smash the world record squat, then you go into the bench and you have a failed attempt at a 500 pound bench, and you you it gets racked weird, gets racked unevenly, and you smash your hand. And there's blood squirting out of your hand. Your hand's all fat and swollen. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I got this big, fat, swollen hand uh, going into the deadlifts. And I haven't trained deadlift. And uh, and my my elbow, I just had surgery. So I'm like, I'm going to do conventional at this meet. Right. I haven't pulled conventional in a long time because, you know, there's no cheating involved with it. So <laughs> I, really, I really don't want to be any so part of it. So what's the point? Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's sad that we even have video of you doing anything uh, <laughs> strong in a conventional style. So uh, so anyway, yeah, I pulled uh, 705 or something like that. Felt easy. Actually, I felt I was good for like 780 or 800. Yeah, it looked very smooth. looked easy. And uh, so I went out there, uh, went for 748 next, which actually would have taken, because by that time I, I'm like, oh, crap, I've got to ru- got to run at the record today now. Right. Mm. Um, but, you know, I... I only had a few fingers on the one hand and <laughs> fat swollenness, so I kept trying to grip the bar to one side to offset it, and I, mm. still I was having grip issues. Right. And uh, just missing it right at lockout. I mean, it was right there, and, yeah. and I, I just couldn't finish what it. What was that like, the day turning around like that? I know uh, you know, you kind of mentioned it was just a, a kind of a tweener meet to uh, prepare you for another competition, but uh, you, know, you have that world record moment, and that must have felt amazing. Uh, and then you go through uh, some stuff on the bench press, and then you end up, you know, here's a world record, att- you know, all time world record attempt total, and the motherfucker just slips right out of your hands. You have no control over it, just slips right out of your fingertips. It was, and you can see in the video, I mean, I was pretty frustrated walking away from that deadlift. Yeah, it looked like you were going to kill the guy behind you. <laughs> hey, he jumped, he jumped all scared, the back spotter. Well, I was, I was ready to turn around and kill the wall, and there was someone there, and yes, he almost yeah. got in the way of <laughs> me and the wall and some killing. So, <laughs> right. But um, move out of the way so I could beat up the wall. But, but I walked away from <laughs> that. I, you know, it was you know there was no nothing to be disappointed about. I mean, I did something that had been you know yeah I, I've wanted the total record for a right. long time too, 
but uh, I did something with the squat that it was, you know, something I only dreamed of. Oh, yeah. And um, so there's, you know, I could not be happy with that. You said it, you said you didn't uh, train deadlifts for that meet. Is that because of injury or is that just because you were so focused on the squat? And what did your like kind of training cycle look like? So, yeah, I've got uh, so I've got elbow issues. And that's, yeah, we uh, talked about eating M and M's was a challenge. Y- yes, yes, they fall on the floor, and I, I think <laughs> Show I. The camera. I, I don't know if you noticed last night when we were eating. Show the stand. camera that you can't put your fit your fit your hand up to your face. Oh yeah, <laughs> this. So yeah, when we're eating dinner, I'd eat, there was a few chips and things that would miss <laughs> and hit the ground. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, my wife says I need, you know, a shirt and pants sponsor. Yeah, pants for my up and down swing, yeah, weight or swings a bib. and shirts because I yeah yeah one of those trough bibs <laughs> like they make for little for toddlers. <laughs> But, um, so I've had surgery on this one and this one, but you know, we end up with, um, so here's the issue here when I'm sumo deadlifting, um, this is how far away my arm is. For those of you not watching on YouTube, uh, he's, uh, missing a good, uh, what, 20% or so, or maybe even more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like 45 degrees. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Missing um, a large percentage of being able to get his arm fully so, extended. So that's people, you know, they're always, uh, you know, wow, you've can't you've, 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 almost, you've, almost you? doubled, you've almost doubled 900 with straps. Why can't you? Right. Why is your deadlift and meat so low? Well, when I have straps, it takes the, the elbow out of the equation. Yeah. And so anyway, I had surgery on the other arm just specifically to try to get it straighter um, so mm-hmm. that I could go back to over under and try to get a big pull in. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, which was an interesting conversation with my surgeon. Luckily, he knows me and he got it. <laughs> but uh, the rehab process ended up being a bit longer because they went in a lot deeper than what they normally would. So they went uh, in and like pinned a bunch of nerves out of the way so that they could get in and remove a lot more bone tissue than they normally yeah. do. Yeah, is it bone on bone kind of yeah. stopping you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so I wasn't really able to do. I started deadlifting, but it was it was actually actually hurting me, um, which that sort of pain isn't actually really common for me. Um, so I basically stopped doing any deadlifts in that training for that for that cycle. Yeah. So how many times a week were you squatting then? I was uh, just squatting once a week. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So you have, you have some sort of uh, nervous system disorder of some kind that uh, you mentioned to me the other day that you don't feel pain or something like that. Is that <laughs> what the fuck is that about? <laughs> it's, Are you made of ananantium? You know, I, I, I take I take a lot <laughs> like of Wolverine? I take a lot of flack for my uh, all my shirtlessness training and stuff like that because pretty much hey, I, I like it. I I, enjoy I, it. Oh, I know. I, I watch it slow mo. <laughs> Why do you think you're here? Uh, <laughs> hey now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, so in recent. You know, we only discovered this in recent years, but reflecting back on my life, I go, oh, yeah, I remember breaking. I remember, uh, you know, I was in fifth grade. I broke my arm. And uh, I went into the office uh, at school because it happened on recess break, and I was holding my arm, and I, I walked up to the nurse, and I said, my, my arm's broken. <laughs> and she's like, no, it's not. Like, well, yeah, it is. She's like, no, it's not. I'm like, yeah, no, it's broken right here. And she looks, it's not broken. You'd be crying. I'm like, well, it doesn't hurt, but it's broken. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it. I felt this now. Yeah, it doesn't so, work anymore. So they went and reset it and went home. And my wife, uh, my mom, uh, gave me a half an aspirin or something. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I'll take that. I don't know. Right. I need it. But uh, so you know, as I've gotten later in my my lifting career, I've had these elbow issues, but no like real pain with it. Um, I ended up detaching two heads of my pec. I've detached my bicep. I've had multiple surgeries, teeth implants. Um, braces, like all this stuff, and zero pain whatsoever. I walk out of surgery and be like, I don't need this pain medicine stuff. Right. What's that for? And uh, so anyway, um, then open some discussions with my doctor and go, oh, realize that that's, you know, type 4 autonomic nervous system disorder. Right. And basically I don't oh. feel what's called deep pain. So <laughs> peripheral pain, like smashing my hand, that hurts. Right. Yeah. But uh, tendon ripping off the bone, joint I issues. See. Bone breaks, I don't feel that. But it also t- is tied to uh, um, uh, to uh, the regular uh, other parts <clears throat> of the nervous system. So um, the ability to control heat, like I overheat oh, really I'll fast. Get you. Basically, yeah. I don't sweat. Um, I do sweat a little. So the next step above this is the people that feel no pain and don't sweat at all. Right. Um, so I'm like the step. We need to find I'm, those people. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm, the step down, I'm the step down. This from is that. X-Men type shit. <laughs> so, so it'll be like 55 degrees in the gym. And but what if I lit your beard on fire? <laughs> <laughs> it would hurt you really bad. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, can, I can tell. <laughs> so, so anyway, is, that's uh, that story. 
Is right. the focus uh, now, um, you know, on the all-time total? What, what's what's the uh, focus? What's the motivating? Uh, what's kind of driving you now? It is it is the total. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, how do I get around this this issue with my arms? I've been trying to figure it out for a number of years, and so more. You can recently, bench press more than that help. <clears throat> What's that? Huh? What? I can, yes. I yes, think you yes. bench press more than you deadlift less. That's, you know what I mean? That's a that's hell of a concept. That's what you're going to show me today. Right? Uh, that's what we're going to so, work on. Yeah. yeah. I'll bench your uh, squat. That's the method here at Super Training. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out a way around that. Um, is a hook grip an option or is that? So that's what I was trying to do yeah. because if I can get that, then it takes the elbows out of the right. equation. So I spent a couple of years trying to do that. But I do have a lot of swelling in my hands, and I think it's because they're downstream of the elbows. So, like, right yeah. now my left – so it's close to a year now since the left elbow surgery, yeah. and my left hand is still more swollen than the right one. Um, so the circulation may not be quite what it was before they started moving things around. Yeah. What if you got surgery to get larger thumbs? Um, <laughs> is that a possibility? Is, it, is, well, that, is that a possibility? I mean, you, you just said surgery is not an issue for you, for you. Isn't penis size related to thumb size? This is getting interesting. <laughs> so a bigger penis, bigger thumb, you need a bigger dick deadlift. Surgery. I get it. Yeah. I will just put it this way: uh, if you go to a hand surgeon and ask them about you know doing stuff like that, they might call you crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know this from personal experience. <laughs> 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 Like, can no, just, that would be can, cheating. Can you just remove, like, I would like a 29 millimeter radius, like, right here yeah. in this Just palm. a gash. I, you might get called crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll try anything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Why, fuck it. Why not, right? So, so I'm still working that. Actually, um, uh, I recently did a pretty dramatic weight cut uh, for a photo shoot. Um, for some market material and just because I'm stupid. Yeah. Uh, for, and for, for Power Magazine. magazine. <laughs> That's right. And uh, it, Our you cover know, model. So the Our grip next is, cover model, the, ladies the, and gentlemen. The grip actually isn't an Subscribe issue. Subscribe so today. It was, uh, when I was light, it actually got enough fluids out of my hands. I was sitting there pulling 700 for reps and with the hook grip. And yeah. at the end, I would stand there and hold it for like 20 seconds going, hey, smack talking you know yeah, yeah, yeah. right but uh, i'm like it feels great but then your squat and your bench probably didn't feel as good exactly yeah, yeah. so so i gotta figure out a way of getting those fluids down but I, the grip isn't an issue sounds like a fat guy so, problem yeah it is a fat fat guy problem. <laughs> fat chubby hands yes. well all we did yesterday was eat that was amazing that was a great day of eating i i, I sure hope that uh my diet coach isn't uh, listening to this right, so. on, the, on the way <laughs> way home from here after a long day of uh, filming and lifting and eating uh, I said to Chris, like, how are you doing food wise? Like, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, In and Out Burger. He's like, Yep. <laughs> like, all right, that was an easy sell, easy sell there. That was that wasn't too hard. Hey, you got a bench press today. In and Out's the best thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to get the belly to to rise up a little bit. Eat yeah. a bunch of a little bit of bunch grease, a little bit of bread. Get bloated. Get your bloat on. I think when I've got my distended belly, it turns Mark on. So it's, oh, it does. Yeah, every time it starts shrinking down, again. he'd be like, You yeah. need some food. You need some food. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. I, want, I want to see that blow it out again. <laughs> Fill that puppy back up. Jim, can you uh, can you get out the script? Um, Mike, you have it. No, I didn't. No, you guys didn't sorry. forward it to me. Did you get the script? Script. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jim is always supposed to bring it, and for some, I don't know how. I can tell you this much. I can tell you that this episode it's is hard drop to stick to it. On Jim um, can tell the future on Watch March twenty fifth. See that? That's what I can tell you about script. That's what that thing down there is supposed to say, but it doesn't. That looks like it's got like some football plays on it. We can run a sweep. Uh, actually, it was a it was a, a concept for a uh, for a podcast table, oh. a little too round. But see, we're we're struggling with like we need a different arrangement. Hey, we need like here. a V. We need like we need the v. flying V. Flying oh v. yeah, hey now, Mighty Ducks. <laughs> you ever seen Mighty Ducks? That's yeah. probably before. You, oh, you seen it? Yeah, of that's course. more my era. So I've good, seen Mighty Ducks. It's amazing. It's a great. We, we, someone asked us about a like best sport movies or something in yeah. the last episode, and we sucked. Like Mark mentioned Rocky, which is good, but we miss so many. Rudy, yeah. Oh, yeah. everyone's like tweeting me afterwards, like you guys forgot all. Like Rudy's fucking amazing. Rudy's great. Yeah, Mighty Ducks. I think we mentioned Hoosiers though. Hoosiers yeah, Hoosiers is great. good. Yeah. Rocky's good. Remember the Titans? Do you have a favorite, Chris? Yeah, sport movies. No, bigger, stronger, faster. <laughs> that is a good movie. That is one of the ones I've watched. So there you go. I, I don't have a lot of time in my life for uh, TV and movies. And did stuff, you play so. uh, any sports growing up? Uh, I did wrestling, and that was the primary one. And uh, cross country. Oh wow! I was. The, That's a good. Mix. I, I think I was the largest cross country runner in the state. Yeah. Usually yeah, outrun really. by the girls. 
um, but uh, I was uh, getting in shape for wrestling, you, and then I uh, finished off the year with track. Did you grow up in uh, Oregon, Portland? Um, Central Oregon. Okay. So. In is that a, like I Medford was, or something? A um, <coughs> little place called Lapine. I don't know. Is Medford Central or am I way uh, off? That's southern, southeast. Oh, so, yeah, I'm yeah way you're, off. You're, you're, you're way <laughs> off. You're way off. So, no, we, it, so, uh, yeah, I was a pretty good, I was a pretty good wrestler. Um, I went, uh, I started really, really crappy. Um, I think my first year I lost 25 matches in a row. Oh, wow. Were you into lifting at that point, oh. for, kind of for the sport? Um, I was, and I was, uh, I was competing at 141. Oh, nice. 141. I think Skinny the next year. Guy. How tall were you? Sa- yeah. the same height as now. Yeah, 5'9". You- yeah. uh, actually, I was 5'10 back then. Oh. <laughs> that was before 8 Gravity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> squished. You got, got squished. You got squished down. Uh, but uh, by my senior year, well, I-, I grew pretty rapidly. I think I wrestled like 160, then 170, and, um, and then uh, I went all the way through districts, and all the way through state up to the final match without having a single offensive point scored against me. And then uh, I was faced the three-time state uh, champion, and I screwed it up in my head, and I, I, I beat myself. Yeah. So, anyway. Son of a bitch, you can't uh, get those was, back. No, you can't. Motherfucking Seth you, Santos letting two uh, giant bombs go right over his fucking head in my, uh, my senior year. I'll never forget <laughs> it, that motherfucker. I hope you're listening. I want to burn that fucking guy's house down. Gave up two touchdowns. We lost 14 to 8. You had a ca- uh, Caucasian DB, though, huh? Oh, he was horrible. Yeah. He was so slow. Yeah. They, they timed his 40-yard dash on a calendar. <laughs> It was bad. The coach is like, he's so smart, though. He's in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. He's too slow. He can't catch anybody. It doesn't damn. matter when you play the city team. Oh, man. The inner city kids will just blow by you. Son yeah. of a bitch. They got to they gotta be able to run Yeah, in, in the inner city. With that uh, with that beard, it does look like you, uh, you know, it does look like you're ready for some uh, ice fishing or something <laughs> like that. Hunting? The thickness don't don't, thick, me- don't the, mess with the Viking power. Man. Oh, hey, now. <laughs> That's right. The Kabuki warrior speaks. <laughs> yeah, explain a little kabuki to us. What's what's the kabuki? Uh, the kabuki is just a uh, a nickname that's been with me since college, and um, you know, it, for me, it just you know, it's a it, it's kind of a mental thing. Like the you know, a lot of people I think today in our sport take it themselves way too seriously. Um, we agree. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that you know, we do this for fun. Um, yeah, but at the same time. Uh, lifting and what we do is also practice for life. So, you know, the, it, it, they're definitely very transferable skills. So you have to be serious. So there's a balance, right? And, and how do you do that? I mean, it's, you know, when you want to get up, when, when I was walking out to that bar to deadlift yesterday, I was taking it pretty damn seriously. And that's, to me, putting on that, that warrior mask. You know, it's like game time. Let's put that on now. But, you know, you know, me walking around saying, oh, this is, I'm a badass, or I do this or that, or, you know, uh, you know, we, in the end, it's, it's not a very important thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't define who we are. Yeah. And uh, so, so you've got to have that balance. But to me, you know, it's, you know, when things are important, when shit goes down in your life, are you prepared to, to, to take on the challenges and tasks ahead of you? Um, so that's, that's, that's what the Kabuki Warrior is. The Kabuki Warrior is your ability to, you know, put on your game face right um you know that kabuki that you know basically that you know the face painting or the mask or whatever is something that has been around so many traditions you know right. as they prepare for war try to yeah. it's to it's been around to, for at least 10 years <laughs> <laughs> if my you, math is I mean, correct <laughs> but go back to uh you know tons i mean we we do it in athletics today but you know i mean it goes yeah centuries yeah. old yeah yeah of people doing it because it's it's what t- allows, like, the person that is a family man, a farmer, that takes care of the part of the village, the community, that is now going to go and become another person and, you know, you know destroy other beings yeah. and protect. You know, they've got to be able to have something that transforms them right. into that other being. And it's... Uh, and, and so that's that's what it is. How do you make that transformation? You know, that's a weird thing that I always noticed about powerlifting gear when I was lifting in it is that you do feel different when you put it on. You feel... A little bit more invincible yeah. when you put it on. You're, That's you're, you're that warrior. You're ready to go to battle. Right, right. right. You got your uniform. And, and and so to be exactly. successful, you have to you have to be that and think that. Right. But at the end of the day, if you know you you see the, these people social posted on social media about you know their lifts and this and that and you know they kind of take that 
all the time. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a little too seriously. Yeah. It's like, okay. yeah. no, no, no. It, it, <laughs> you're really not a warrior on it. You, know? you don't need, you <laughs> yeah. need the smelling salts yeah, yeah, every yeah. day. You're not, you're not at war. <laughs> you know, war is much exactly. different fucking yeah. ballgame. Exactly. And, you know, what, what happens in the gym or, you know, in your life is, you know, it's, it's not that important. Important in the right, evening. So, right, right. You know, if it is, you've got some things to figure out because you know, if you get hurt and injured and you're done, yeah. now, you know, what does that mean to your life? Well, you talked about being busy. I mean, you probably, um, if the rest of your life is really busy, you can't afford to uh, to have an injury or something that's going to take you out of the rest of your life as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell the real Kabuki story. The real Kabuki story involves green alcohol. He had some green alcohol <laughs> at some point and uh, ended up with a green tongue like the uh, the uh, great Kabuki, the uh, wrestler used to spit out uh, used to spit out the green the green mist, right? Yep, yep. And uh, Chris also shared with me a story that was uh, very uh, goodwill hunting ish uh, where he would uh, he was fucking lazy when he was in college. He didn't want to go to school. Yeah. But he would just show up on test day and he would just look at the question and he'd come in and just right before class he'd figure it out, he'd answer it and then he'd leave. <laughs> Damn it, I knew I shouldn't have told you that. And so the uh <laughs> the uh that's where the uh, legend of the Kabuki warrior first started to grow, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it was. So uh yeah. <laughs> so, I had to embarrass you a little uh, bit. It, it it's a decent, you know, I, I I don't share that story too much because you know, I'm always professing about, you know, hard work and vision right. and you know all yeah. these things and but at the same time, that's that's what I was doing at the time right. elsewhere. <laughs> um, but you know, I I started college and I went, you know, this is it's kind of easy, right? Yeah. And so I went and I went started working full time. Um, well, it's important you know, to bring out because I, you're. You know, uh, I started raising my sisters and, but I didn't. I would, yeah, I didn't even buy books. Uh, right. I would just show up at school on midterms or finals, take the tests, and uh, I had the highest graduating in engineering. GPA. Yeah, what a meathead, um, huh? So, but, you know, I, I wasn't, you know. Yeah, I, sharing I a sauna with a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Well, he is such a meathead that he almost missed his fucking flight out here. He couldn't find his fucking supplements. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Oh, I'll catch the next plane. Where's my fucking branch chain amino acids? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any supplements in super oh, training. Yeah, I, right. I, 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 I was bombing through the line yesterday morning, you know, because the lady hands me the ticket. She's like, you better run. <laughs> hands it to me. And, and so I take off running. And uh, I get up three fish oil I, I, falling out of your bag. <laughs> <laughs> I get up to the, the security line and I'm like, ah, sh- screw it. I just start running right past everybody, go, going under the hoop. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, nobody's going to say anything to me. Probably <laughs> and I not. go, I go straight to the front, right <laughs> to the guy that's checking security. I'm barely breathing, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's some guy back in the back of the back Why of the, the line. Why is so red? There, <laughs> you know. Let him go. Let him go. He's red. <laughs> <laughs> there was one. There was one person that said something. That was that was it. Yeah, and he's it's like, great. "You must be in a big hurry." Oh. Or that guy yeah. saying to someone else. I turn around. I'm like, "Yeah, I am." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I am the guy. My my ID and went <laughs> just went off. <laughs> Jesus, but I think it's important to, to bring up uh, your experience in college because you're the kind of person that's uh, really you're really gifted at figuring things out. You know, you're good with your you're good with your mind and you're good with your hands. You're working on. Uh, you, when I went to your gym a few years ago, you were uh, you building your own equipment. You had a bunch of your own equipment, customized uh, things that I've never fucking seen before. Yeah, I I try to figure out how to perfect everything. I just can't. I, I, things can be better. Like right. you said, my, my bench press, you walk up to it, you press a button, the bar raises and lowers. Mm. You know, nobody has to pick it up to change heights. It's on, on hydraulics, yeah. And uh, Oh, really? Yeah, so we've got... That's fucking awesome. Yeah, we've got, we, we've, we've got talked awesome. about stuff like that forever, <laughs> yeah, but like yeah. that's the only way in my head. Like, oh, yeah, we could put it on an elevator, but like my head's like, oh, we could do that, but how the... F- we're not going to fucking <laughs> yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, when I was at his gym, he had like some sort of power tool that he like stuck in the side of the bench and go... Rrr! And then just thing would just go up and then go down. That's amazing. Yeah. So now, yeah, now it's just there's a little handheld yeah. pendant that you touch and it just raises. You get electrocuted a little bit, <laughs> a little bit <laughs> but it's good we for make your it bench. Fun. Yeah, so wake you up a little bit. It's good for your bench. So transfer. So transfer yeah, I, I try to I try to perfect everything. Anything that I ingo- get involved with, I kind of take to the next level. Like I was telling you yesterday when we uh, did with the interview, like my when I lifted my my toe rig. You know, I looked at all the lift kits and stuff on the market. That's what people don't do is they go buy that and install it. And I'm like, I look at the design and nobody out there that manufactures this stuff actually understands suspension design yeah. or steering design. So I had to design and build it from scratch because they're not done right. So now I've got this. You've been in my truck. It's 
bigger yeah. than hell drive oh, around on, on it was 40s. impossible to even get in it it was but, huge but the thing is i can it's like getting I a can, fire truck i can bomb yeah, over yeah, i can bomb huge. over the mountain going 70 80 miles an hour and it handles better than sock yeah and yeah. you're like how 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 the hell is that possible that thing's taller than hell yeah but it you know it drives like it's on rails so because yeah. it's designed properly and you went so, to school to learn all that um, you know, there wasn't any uh, direct schooling on suspension and engineering. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Steering design. So that was all stuff I had to learn on my own. Yeah. It's just stuff you just played around with and figured out. For yeah. our audience who does not know, what do you what do you do in your um, real life <laughs> other than own a gym? Other than uh, cheat with your sumo deadlift thing. <laughs> sumo, damn it. That's what I do for a living is sumo deadlift. Oh, we didn't time. even talk about how bad you cheated on your squat. Your feet were uh, out past your shoulders. <laughs> That's because I squat. That's a sit when you. No, squat. that's not a real. That's not a real squat. You got to go on the internet. If your feet are out past your shoulders, it's not a real squat. Yeah. So the internet uh, has to vote. Every and what time were those uh, block things on your knees? I don't think those count. Oh yeah, you Raps. wrapped your knees up with some bandages. Yeah, those don't count. Stuff. Those don't count. <laughs> Son of a, you know. Oh, Just I when you think you know somebody. Yeah, might I as well use that. that. Did you know I had a belt on too? Might no. as well use oh, that hydraulic oh. to lift it. All right. Oh I've God. been told. Huge asterisk this 881 have, now. I have raw with wraps in the title of my video, and I've been told many times it's not raw because I have wraps on, even yeah. though they can't read the title, and right. you've got a belt. But So, Jim, back to your question. <laughs> Uh, I do uh, what's called operations, just operations management or running manufacturing companies. Uh -huh. um, uh, so the last 10 years has been like in executive roles, uh, either like director of manufacturer, general manager, um, you know, those type of roles, but basically running all the operations. So like uh, engineering, procurement, um, the production management, um, uh, production planning, all those will roll up. So and, a and lot of balls to keep in the air. What type of yeah, uh, companies so or stuff are you making? Um, so I've done, uh, as general manager of an aerospace company for like four years. Making like rockets and shit? Um, yeah, what the? <laughs> uh, I've done automotive a few times. I'm doing automotive right now. What's aerospace? What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you making? Well, if you ever got on a 737, I've made a lot of parts for those. So. Oh, okay. really? That's um, nuts. Um, so a lot of different industries. So our lives are in your hands every time we hop on Southwest. Not, not anymore. Oh, all so, right. Not anymore. <laughs> Now it's every time you get in a car. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah I've been working in the manufacturing environment uh, since the late 90s. So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, just a, continued to progress in that environment and, and uh, you know, been working executive level stuff uh, for, for a while. So, yeah, it's it makes training a really challenge because, you know, you go in and, you know, from a work environment, there's a lot of things that fall on your plate. You know, the performance of the company, everybody's jobs, like all these things, like, um, you know, ends up being stressful. Very. Yeah. You, you know, there's, it's, it's pretty high stress. And some days you walk into the gym after that and you're trying to get under a bar and it's like, you just don't have the emotional or mental capacity anymore. Right. You can't and, just change it. I mean, you can't yeah. just shut off what happened for the day. It's hard. It's or, hard sometimes. Or it's just, you're just depleted from it. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Stress is stress. Yeah. Not just, you know, training fatigue, but life yeah. fatigue. Yeah. It all dips from the same area. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I don't, you know, I get a question a lot of times, you know, why aren't, why don't you travel and do all these meets and that, and I'm like, you know, look at the guys that I compete against, you know, right. none of them really do, you know, none of them really have families or jobs like that or the other, right. you know, it's like, I rarely, if ever even know when I do a meet, like that I'm actually going to be able to do it up until the last, yeah. like the last few weeks. Cause it's like, and usually I've made a lot of compromises in my training schedule and all those other things. Cause that's not the priority, you know? Right. I remember when I went up to your gym, uh, and uh and hung out with you for a day or two up there that you were at that point like you were just talking about how much you were working 60 70 hours a week or some shit like that you know at that point yeah so that was that was the time i just started working for the aerospace company and i walked in and i i met the owner and he sold me on this story and and i start meeting with the, the different customers so boeing was the biggest one but there's a few others and i realized oh crap they're in bad shape these customers are actually about ready to walk away from them uh -huh. and this company is going to close down Right. And, you know, financially, their things are not working correctly. So it was a full hands on deck I, at the time, because initially we were going to work on some projects together. Right. And I said, hey, Mark, here's some ideas. Let's run with this stuff. And I realized that I wasn't going to be able to follow through on those commitments. Right. And, uh, and I think I told you so. <laughs> you did. Um, but, uh, you know, it was full, you know, full turnaround mode. And I ended up having to bring that company and get it turned around and sold. Um, to ensure that it was viable and going forward and that everybody, so it was a four year, basically, you know, turnaround there. It was actually right. 
two, three years turnaround and then a year of basically prep and getting it sold. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty challenging to stay focused on my training and do all the other stuff during that time. And so you were talking about college being relatively easy when you were in college, what is it that you were, that you wanted to do? What, what was your plan? Did (laughs) and and did you have one? Yeah. Chris, what was your plan? (laughs) I had no plan. (laughs) <laughs> I had no, you know, that's a big lack. I don't know about anybody else, but there was like no like career advice or anything. Right. Like you're still I working got. on a plan. I am still all working the time. Yeah, right? I know you mentioned it, that yesterday, but, and, but by by all but, appearances, you're a pretty successful guy. But so here's, like, so here's a, here's a funny story though. So I said I didn't go to, you know, I basically didn't show up um, to. Uh, I just show up to take the test. Right. So I just picked a career. I said uh, I want to do engineering because I'm good at math. Yeah. It could have been psychology. It could have been a teacher. You know, yeah, yeah. whatever. So I picked that. I go down to school and uh, they sign me up. I'm like, I want to be a mechanical engineer, and uh, just random because that's what's in a book, you know. Right. Like, and and uh, somehow my thing got filled out to be a manufacturing engineer. And Whoops. I'm like, and I'm like, well, the first term the classes are the same, so I didn't get up to changing my major. Well, then I moved off campus and I basically never went up to school again. I'm like. <laughs> well, you know, second term, and finally You're I'm just like, so lazy. You got your PhD <laughs> in it. So, like, so I ended it. up actually getting a degree in something that I never, I didn't even know what it was to begin <laughs> with, and it never actually intended, purposely intended to sign up for. There you go. So that's 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 so pretty sad. Of, you yeah. sort of slouched into your uh, into your profession, as yeah, it were, kind, kind into of. your career. Yep. We well, don't, that works uh, too. Yeah. We don't often uh, like to talk training too much because it gets boring with sets and reps and stuff. But uh, there are only five things to talk about in training. I don't even know what they are. Yeah, I don't either. But your point. your training is pretty unique. Um, you're kind of on a auto auto regulation type deal going, but you also uh, mess around with a lot of like uh, speed units and different uh, mathematical things. Yeah. So just explain that maybe quickly on, to uh, people how you train. Yeah. So um, I use a lot of different tools. One to force myself because I kind of push myself really hard. Um, just in everything I do. So I actually have to have feedback mechanisms in place for myself to get yeah, like external, like <laughs> damn it, Duffin, knock this shit off because you're going to push yourself too far. Yeah. Right. Um, but, uh, it's really helped me, um, with, with my training. So, so yeah, I've used, um, both, uh, um, the HRV systems from BioForce and Omega wave to manage kind of my, you know, how my body's responding to nervous system response recovery. But more importantly, actually, I use the uh, speed monitoring device, uh, velocity-based training stuff. So, so I'm actually measuring the bar speed. And I, what I like about that is I can have a set of parameters and say, this is what I'm going to train to today. And as long as I can do that, I can keep training. And yeah. that's my... So you may have like a speed work day or a max effort day or a volume type day, but you cut yourself off when you hit a certain uh, dip in speed or velocity. Basically, yeah. so there's a few different ways I'll play with it. So, um, and I actually don't do speed straight speed tra- training. I do what I call heavy speed. So you do maximal lifts, or are you, or are you pretty much sticking to these uh, heavy speed sets that you were talking about earlier? Basically, the heavy speed sets. So unless it's a test type scenario, um, usually. Usually I'm, I'm doing what I call heavy speed work. Occasionally you'll have to test just to kind of, you know, get the information that you need to see where you're at. Yeah, basically. And, and when you do that, is that with a double, single? It just depends. It depends. Okay. But uh, how, I, how I manage the speed, I, I, just, I use it as another variable. Um, so, so instead of just playing with weights and sets and reps, I can, do the, I can actually use that as a variable. I can say, hey, I'm going to train with 675. And as long as I'm lifting the bar, I'm going to do doubles. And, as, and I'm going to keep lifting until, like, as long as I stay above three meters a second. Mm. And so that may mean I can get three sets, and then it drops off. So next workout, I'm going to try to hit four sets. And next workout, I'm going to try to hit five sets, right? right? So I've made progress. Or I can say, okay, I'm actually going to train with the same weight, and I'm going to try to get faster. So next week, I, I'm going to try to hit 0.32 meters a second. Then I'm going to try to hit 0.35. So I've kept the same weight, the same sets and reps, but I've made progress. Mm. And you're also or, improving your form along the way. Exactly. You know, if your speed is similar, odds are that your form is probably similar. And then I may take it another step and go, okay, I'm at three meters a second with 675. So next week I'm going to try to hit the same three sets of, you know, five sets of three, two doubles and stay with, with 685, then 695. Right. Um, same you, speed, a little heavier. How weight. do you choose the uh, weights you're working with? The loose percentage or... 
Uh, I have no idea what percentages are. Yeah. It's a little way beyond my mental scope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't play around with percentages. Yeah. Um, so it all comes down to a bar and how it's moving. Yeah. And choose a weight that you think you can move that yeah. fast. So I've got... Um, Is so week one a little bit open uh, after saying what you just said? So, like I said, I, 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 I could be picking from any one of those and I'm just finding out where I'm at. Right. Um, do we, you know, establish the baseline and try to either improve the weight or improve this, this improve the speed. Right. Or, you know, improve the number of sets, right? So any of those variables allow me a whole nother thing to play around with. Um, and then, yeah, I'll just try to improve it over a few weeks, and then I may change to doing a buffalo bar or doing it with chains. Does uh, doing... video give you enough information or not really? So once you've been doing it for a while and you know you've got a baseline, I can do it visually. Right. So... Because what we see a lot of times in here, Jim, you know, obviously has been videoing this stuff forever. And uh, what we end up seeing is, uh, you know, a lot of guys are shaking and shimmying and all these different things on a walkout or something like that. Or even just standing up with the bar. And uh, you're like, holy shit, the guy's going to die. And then he, boom, he he nails a lift. We go back and watch it on video. And like, oh, it didn't look that bad. Because you don't see all those little nuances in the video. So, uh, you know, when I, I don't need that monitoring device. But at the same time, if you don't have it, sometimes... You always want it, like if you're doing speed training, and you go, was that faster than last week? Right. Was it right. faster than the week before? Uh, was it I faster? See. Oh yeah, yeah, that was faster. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You can have some weight. That was as fast, right? But if you know that you're going to measure it, and you know you've got that feedback, that can help you be a little bit more honest. Yeah. And not have you know the the scope creep. Well, yeah. I think uh, a lot of beginners, or I guess it's maybe by personality, but I think especially Mark and I are a little bit more like you, where we'll drive ourselves into the ground before we'll underwork. Right. Right. So I, I lift 400 or even yesterday, you know, you were helping me with my form. So things were a little weird in the deadlifts, but I grabbed 585 and I was like, fuck, that's heavy. Well, I've probably just been kicking my ass for the last three weeks and I'm not, I don't know it. Right. Yeah. Whereas and, and, if and, I'm regulating a little bit better, I'll tone myself back. So I'm a little bit fresher every yeah. week. And so that's what I like about those, those other tools that I've got is you could look and see, oh, I'm recovering well. Yeah. I'm not. This is the day I should go for it. Yeah, or yeah. you said, you know, uh, was I'm, it HRV? I'm yeah, that's a uh, just explain to people real quick. Uh, heart rate vari- variability. So it's a it's a way of basically measuring your nervous system. Joel Jameson. Response. So Joel Jameson does the BioForce one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you and just uh, check it checks you, like your thumb or pulse or something in the morning. Kind of gives you a rating of uh, what you're doing, right? Like a yellow, green, red. So yeah, I'm trying to remember the science. It's actually been a while since I've read Joel's. I book. think you uh, you pull it, you pull a, a chunk of your hair out, right? Put in a cauldron. A blender. A cauldron. It's your first piss of the morning, right? <laughs> Something like that, right? And you mix it with a blade. Where's of grass. the hair come from? <laughs> so it's a, it's actually measuring the variability. It's a pregnancy test in there too. I think, <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. So it's measuring the variability in your in your heart rate, which is actually telling you your 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 basically the response between your sympathetic and nervous and uh, uh, parasympathetic nervous system mm. and how they're balancing against each other. So I think too many people get caught up in the overtraining's bad. Overtraining's bad. Um, we can't think, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> but it, it, you know, it is going to downregulate you, but that's okay. If you're actually right. training in that space and still making progress, you're making progress. And if you recover, so as long as you know where you're at and how you're responding to that, you can still move forward now. So in that, if you're using that tool and it says you're recovered and you're not, you're not performing now you've got an issue, right? right. right. Um, or if you're continuing now, you're actually starting to decline, you know, you need to do something about it. So, you know, between that and then actually establishing here's some parameters and what you need to do with actually what the bar is doing today. So I like that just because it's, you know, it's, it's prescriptive, not descriptive. So a lot of, a lot of people will grab this. It's results based. So a lot of people take like a, well, let's, let's do a small love journey program or let's do a whatever right. program. You know, they don't realize that that program was actually a coach working very closely with an athlete over this 12 week period. They're watching them 24 And they're watching and doing exactly what I'm talking about. But they do it maybe be visually or whatever. This is how they're responding. And this is what we're going to do next week based on last week. And this is what we're, they don't have this whole thing spelled out over this 12 week period. We tried to explain This is exactly what we're going to do, right? So now we get to the end of it and they go, what'd you do to prep for that meet? And they write it all out. And now everybody copies that and goes and tries to follow it. And that's that's not exactly how your body is going to be responding. Not to say uh, Boris Shako is not a genius. But if not everybody can just follow that, that <laughs> program that's that, running around the internet. Boris Chico is a great coach yeah. <laughs> and a great programmer. But that 
is a de- for his athletes. That is a yeah. descriptive program. Yeah, they probably sleep not, at his house. Not a prescriptive program, and you have to understand the difference. So it's it's retrospective. It's this is what happened, not this is what we're going to do. This is what you need to do. Exactly. Yeah. Those are two different things. Right. And that's that's the big that's yeah. the big yeah. Thing. People are like, oh, I ran Shaco and now I'm pop my ACL. It's well, like, yeah. <laughs> you're fucking training way too hard for your little body. It's, it's you've got to understand the difference between de- descriptive and prescriptive training, and that's that's what those tools that I use allow me to do is go. Here I can take it and take a client or someone at the gym and say I don't actually have to tell them I need you to do this sets and reps and whatever. I can mm. say here's your parameters. You can train within it, and it actually allows me to do prescriptive training. Yeah. Without actually spelling out exactly what needs to happen, right? So you bring uh, some of those units with you. Um, I brought one. Yeah, maybe we'll we, dick around on the bench a little bit. bit. Yeah, I don't think I've ever made played with one. So, is it like an app on your phone or something, or to to the laptop or something like that, or how do you how do you get the information? Yeah, so I've got two different ones. One's called uh, Gym Aware, and it's actually it's the the more precise one. Uh, mounts to the floor, and then you've got a tether that goes to the bar, or okay. your hand, or dumbbell, or whatever it is. Um, but it, it links to you know an iPhone, iPad, whatever. Um, and then I've got a newer one um, from a company. Um, it's out of Canada, but uh, Lead FTS uh, sells it. Called it's push- Canadian. I don't want it. Ca- calls it a push band. <laughs> And uh, so I just got that, and I'm playing around with that. And again, it links to you know Android or Apple device, but it's a uh, it either oh, goes on I your wrist it, yeah. or your on the bar or whatever. So uh, so I've got that. Um, it's uh, definitely much much more economical. Yeah, I know yeah. there's a company coming out with one that's like a Bluetooth collar. It, that's basically what it is. Oh, maybe that's yeah, the, the same that's thing. The one, yeah. I've seen it yeah. on the Instagrams, but I haven't looked into it. Uh, do you? Uh, you also were using like apps on your phone or something like that too. Are those effective, or is that so, part of well, that? That's system? part of it. So okay. the app is tied to it's Bluetooth okay. connected to the device okay. that is capturing the. And is it showing you the data. bar path and everything? It's kind of showing you all the different. Um, the gym where I will do that. I haven't played around with the push band yet enough to know mm-hmm. the the depth of. Right. Yeah, but main things you're looking at are bar speed. The main thing I look at is velocity. Yeah, yeah. but. You you, you're putting in the weight, so it's got power output. It's got you. You can, you've got you can basically know anything you need to know about what's going on with the bar. Um, so yeah. there's a lot of ways you could actually look at your time under tension. You could look at there's a lot of different things. But I, from a from that prescriptive model, yeah, I can't tell somebody I want you to have two seconds of time under tension with the bar. You know, if you want to do yeah. that, you can just tell them to count to two on your yeah. way down. You know, yeah, right. simple um, enough. <laughs> Um, so uh, the velocity is uh, that's where I, le- I use that because it's very easy to make the prescriptive yeah. training off of that. So you said you kind of go um, each week you'll either uh, try to add a, a rep or set, kind of like we tell everyone, right? <laughs> do do more than you did last week, and you'll probably get stronger. But uh, uh, as simple as that sounds, it gets hard. So you start doing four weeks, and now you're up to five sets of five at the same speed you are with whatever six seventy five. I made that example obviously, but. Um, do you ever take a deload? You said you switch bars so here I'll, and there. I'll just change up. So yeah. I'll work on something different. Yeah. So so from there I'll go. Okay, what's what's my overall weakness? Am I feeling weak in the hole? Um, so maybe maybe I'll um, or maybe I'm feeling like I you know I could hand, I need more weight total, so I'll add chains. Or I may go. You know what? My work capacity is down. I actually need to get my work capacity up. So I may start doing sets of seven. Or do you know a really high volume twenty yeah. rep week, or typically uh, work out every day? Or I go, you know, like my, my, my yes, exactly. So there's there's a lot of other things that I look yeah. at that I'm basing. So, but I'll bounce around. I'll change exercises. I'll change sets and reps. But it's all based on, you know, analyzing what is the next step. Yeah. What mm. is the piece that I'm a little bit weaker on right now that isn't exactly necessarily always pure sh- strength? Yeah. Right? So yeah, yeah. how do I take that whole scope of my training and not just focus on moving my max up here? But if I look at um, yeah, boosting work capacity, where my work capacity, yeah. you know, my there's heavy speed, there's you know speed and hypertrophy, which is a little bit further down the paradigm, and then there's basically you know more just pure pure speed. So and, in, and endurance, endurance strength, you not to where you're getting into pure endurance and you actually slow down. Like a marathon, you don't get yeah you know anything past that twenty repper, you actually start slowing down to perversion serve strength so i try to stay within that paradigm but make sure that i'm always actually have a a clean focus so unlike a a traditional let's say progressive you know linear you know um, standard periodization i'm going to go 20 reps then 18 reps then 16 reps then you know what is your damn focus yeah what are you trying to get better at during there so if i'm counting (laughs) so 
so so so with each piece i just pick a, a certain subset of that paradigm yeah. so i'm doing doubles or I'm doing five reppers, or you know I'm all the way down in twenties because I'm trying to. You do both. I'm either focused on speed and hypertrophy, speed strength, or you know I'm working on more of that work capa- work capacity and speed all the way down that that paradigm. You do the twenty reppers, four week blocks of each, and then kind of it varies. Analyze. It yeah. just depends on what I'm what I'm what I'm kind of focused on, what I think my weaknesses are. So I'll I'll take just subsets through that whole paradigm, and then I try to. I'm always trying to move that whole thing up. Right. So you're talking about something that's self-critical. There's a certain amount of like insight, intuition that comes from it. Like I've, this has worked before for me. I need to go in this direction or I know I'm, I'm lacking here. I need to go that direction. Constantly correcting, auto-regulating, thinking about it all of the time. If somebody is not capable of that, what do, what do you suggest? I suggest that they take a program that is successful, um, and they follow it. Mm-hmm. And they do it for six to nine months. Mm-hmm. Then they pick another program, and they do that. And then after like three years, they go, if they what haven't work, figured it out how what to works, do it. What, what works <laughs> right. well for me, and how do I respond? And now you can actually start putting those tools to place. Right. So you can't get, be constantly, I'm not making, oh, I just, I've been on this two months, and I'm not making, let's switch to the next best thing, the next best thing. Mm-hmm. There is no next best thing. The best thing is to figure out how you respond best to training. Right. And to do that, you need to pick a program, follow it to the letter, not changing it, whatever. Follow it to the end and do it for six to nine months. Try something else and then get some years under your belt doing that. And then that's how you learn how, how, to, how, how to actually work yourself. Everybody wants the results like yesterday and they've all been in it for six to nine months. Period. <laughs> right. Yep. So you've got to kill that training ADHD. So yeah. yeah, what I've been, what I just described, that's probably pretty fairly high level stuff. That's right. somebody, people like me. They've been in the sport for a long time. This is how, if I'm training a client, this is actually what I would be analyzing in their training to right. take them to the next level. But you know, if you don't have those skills, this is what you need. You need to get years under your belt and with some a consistent program for a period of time. And uh, with take the ADHD out of it, follow it through to the end, and learn how you respond. Right. So, you were mentioning to me. Uh, you know, I thought it was interesting when you're saying you do the the uh, high level of sets. You try to add sets per week. Try to make sure you're moving at a similar speed. Um, and you uh, you mentioned about the setup. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because you're doing you're doing uh, many many setups uh, throughout the workout because of the high level of sets. Yeah. So um, we take the. The, the heavy strength piece, that's the most important piece for me, right? So if I hit five doubles, and if instead of doing five doubles, I could have done one heavy triple to failure, I would have only got set up to the bar once. Like I would have walked up there, been mentally prepared once for that big heavy unrack. That you went first go through that rep, whole that checklist first, of things exactly, that you need to go all through. all the things like – you know, later we're going to film, like, what's the important things to squat? There's a mental checklist of here's the things. This is how I want you to set up. You're only going to practice that once. Yeah. You're only going to practice that once. And you're only going to have two reps that are actually the speed that you want. Right. And then you're going to – your third rep, so 30% of your training is actually not what you want. And obviously you're practicing so, it in the warm-up, but it's not the same because you don't have the correct amount not of weight the, on there. Exactly. So that's my that's my big negative with uh, pure strength, you know, like the f- speed training in the 50% range. Right. Mm-hmm. You can get in and do it without actually prepping all the way. Yeah. Right. Am I fully set up? Am you I mentally give prepared? A Am I da, 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 this and this and this? And you're not, you don't have to be there because the weight just doesn't demand it. Right. The weight doesn't demand that you, that you have to be perfect, that you've got your mental game on. Right. right? So with those doubles, you're up there and that what you can only triple, you've got it. You've got to be set up right. So one, so I've done four or five doubles. So that means I've got four opportunities for setups instead of one. Right. So that mental preparation, that first one. And it means that my last rep wasn't what I wanted. So I just did eight reps, though. So right. seven out of the eight reps that I did are the desired speed, the start, you know, that they're how I want them to be. What about uh, adding uh, frequency in the week? I know you said you kind of deadlift or squat once a week, but if you double that. I'm actually doing that right now. Yeah, and get so, a little more so, um, of that, of that uh, practice. Yeah. So recently, um, I, I, I increased my volume pretty significantly uh, 
with the diet with the these uh, diet prep that I was doing cuz he got fat uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah and I found that I'm responding really really well I'm recovering better um, basically with the you know the intra workout nutrition approach that I have and so I'm playing around with that right now yeah. so um, last week I actually ended up I think I had like three squat days in and deadlifted on Saturday and then came back in and we deadlifted again yesterday um, so with the help of, help of some uh, whiskey, I might it add. definitely <laughs> helped. It definitely helped. <laughs> it helped a lot. But um, so so, yeah. I think there's you know, but you've got to sign it. You've got to you got to see how you respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So multiple ways to skin a cat. Yeah. So I'm doing it right now by because if I I squat a lot, so if I was to squat two or three times a week of the weight that I do, right. I think it would eight hundred plus you'll die. Beat, beat the crap yeah. out of me, right? Yeah. yeah. So. So I'm doing returns. alternatives. So that's why I've got a belt squat machine in recently. I can pump the volume up. I can do things yeah. that allow me to do that without beating me up. Yeah, Smelly just so. got one. I'm stoked to use it. So, Yeah, yeah, it'll be awesome to have. We'll have huge quads, everybody. Yeah. That's we'll right. get new pants all Big around. Quads. Um, you know, whenever I uh, you know have uh, guests here at Super Training or when we have guests on the uh, podcast, uh, it's always interesting to hear you know everybody's uh, thoughts on, on these different topics. And it, they end up... Uh, you know, all being very similar, you know, they come into this, uh, similar conclusions, just in different ways, uh, Stan efforting, uh, former pro bodybuilder and a high level power lifter, obviously, uh, he talked a lot about the core when he was here and he talked a lot about, uh, you know, if he can do something standing, he'll do it standing rather than seated, um, to try to involve his stomach, try to involve his core more, um, even just things like pull-ups and, uh, just whatever can involve his entire body his entire system as a single unit rather than just, uh, you know, hopping on a machine or just uh, doing like a seated overhead press. Uh, he's going to try to uh, go more towards the thing that's going to work your whole body rather than just a single joint movement. And when you came in, you mentioned the same thing. Uh, you know, we had uh, Dave Ziske, uh, who ends up with a slightly rounded back. Um, and we had a couple other guys with some issues, and you just kept punching everybody in the stomach pretty much. <laughs> 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 That's what I got from the whole thing. Well, I do like to do so, that. So, uh, you know, what are some of your uh, thoughts and, and uh, ideas behind, um, you know, behind, behind some of this? Um, we are a machine that is meant to operate as a system. I mean, very clearly, that's that's what we're designed. We're not, you know, uh, every we're not designed for this isolation-based stuff. So anytime you have a disconnect, things can start going wrong uh, at various other points in the chain. So you definitely want to have system-based stuff. Like uh, with Dave, we did some stuff. Uh, he was having trouble touching his toes. I think he was like eight inches away. And... You know, I did some stuff that basically was some some core integration stuff from the shoulder and hip. Right. And no stretching, and all of a sudden, he could touch his toes effortlessly. We never stretched. We never did any of it. But I got, basically what I did was some stuff that reset uh, his body to work as a system. Um, just some techniques. Showed him how to breathe. Some techniques. So, yeah, we did some breathing stuff. And um, so exactly what Stan says. You know, any time that you want to do that, like I do a lot of stuff either standing or even standing and walking sometimes. Uh, in my training, um, because yeah, I mean, even if you're doing, you know, an overhead extension, same thing, you know, there's no reason you should, you should have that, that breathing, that pressurization, right. all of that intact, you know, good rib cage position. Um, if you do that, you're going to have a much better connection as a whole. It's going to reduce your injury, injury risk. It's going to have those muscles working in operation, how they're supposed to work across your whole body. They are connected. Even when you're your doing invention. something. If you've got an issue with your glute, you may end up with an issue in your left shoulder. In your right glute, you may end up with an issue in your left shoulder. Yeah, you know it, they are connected. Right. Your right oblique isn't inflating. You may end up with a you know a glute issue or adductor issue on the other side or on the same side. It's all connected. And if those things, if they're not, if you don't have the time practice making them work, then you get under a heavy load when it, you need the system to work. Right. Like you said, you don't need the system to work when you're sitting there doing triceps. Right. But you need the system to work because we squat, we deadlift, we work as a whole, we get in and out of our car, we move for a refrigerator in the house, we do that thing, and then, damn, what just happened? Yeah. Yeah. Okay? That's why. And your body, you can't let it forget how to work in that fashion. 
Yeah, even with your invention, the shoulder rock, uh, you know, is when you hold it out uh, away from your body a little bit, you'll notice that, you know, it takes a lot of strength through the forearms, the wrist, uh, even through your stomach. Uh, it's kind of a whole system uh, type of movement. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are now using it and getting on board with it for shoulder rehab. But it's kind of working your entire body, right? It is. So there's um, – and the, the, the coaching videos that come with it, are based off of those reset philosophies and the core integration. And that's where the power of that device comes from is, you know, actively mobilizing all those areas, strengthening while having that all tied into that, that core, which is going to affect everything all the way through. So, yeah. Yeah. You and I talked about, uh, you know, having like knee pain and, uh, you're like, okay, well, we got to start with the way that you're standing and start with the way that you're sitting and start with X, Y, and Z. And you mentioned, uh, with your job that you end up, uh, sitting at a desk quite a bit. And with the multiple injuries that you've had, uh, you've done anything and everything you can. You'll get up at your desk and you'll start doing some of the drills that you put me and Silent Mike through uh, right there at your desk. But a lot of times uh, when you're talking to a client or you're talking to somebody who's like, hey, my fucking knee, my knee hurts. What, are you, you know, what is all this shit you're showing me? It's my fucking <laughs> knee. <laughs> I want you to work on my knee, you know. And uh, so you, you run into that a lot. You know, a lot of people, they're not grasping the whole concept they, of it's a full body thing. They that embrace the whole thing. They do. I, I don't get a lot of that much anymore just because of the credibility standpoint. Right. Um, people know that I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they'll listen. But I, you know, I could definitely see that for a struggle for someone else that's just, you know, a, right. a trainer or whoever going, why, why, why are you teaching me to breathe? <laughs> right. I have shoulder problems. Yeah. What, right. what is this breathing? I've job? been breathing for 30 you. years. Exactly. It hurts I know. right here. Yeah. It's so bad. <laughs> Over here, doc. Yeah. No, right there. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that, that's, <laughs> so I could definitely see that as a, as a struggle. And right. like my, uh, my, my doctor friends, you know, I hear that actually quite a bit the whole thing they're like you know they have you know people question them why, why are you teaching me breathing i the problem is over here and they get right. that all the time <laughs> right um so yeah they don't see those things as symptoms yeah especially with a normal clientele i think like with the people that we deal with like athletes a lot of times they understand that breathing is important they may not know exactly how to do it mm -hmm. but they know that it is you know they know this stuff is important um, so I think we probably actually get a better response than the people on dealing with the regular population that's sedentary, you know, you know, sitting, sitting, sitting sit around Sunday watching football. And right. that's all they, you know, that's all they do. And they know that now they threw their back out. And I think that some of us definitely have had the experience of being with a practitioner who is able to say, you know, you say, I got this problem over here and they go to another part of your body and they go, are you sore right there? And you go, yeah, what the fuck? And they'll, because it's, you know, it, once you've been through that experience with somebody, then you stop to questioning and then you realize that there's more going on than you're conscious of. And that person has seen enough to be able to to uh, tell you kind of what's up. So, yeah, and the, the stuff that I'm, uh, the philosophy that I adhere to and have been trained in is basically saying, Anybody that starts with the the area of pain is lost. You know, but it's all about finding where the painless dysfunction is and fixing that. Because most of the time, this knee pain is because we're compensating. It's a compensation pattern. Mm -hmm. You're doing something, something shitty something else. somewhere. Yeah. We've got this issue over here in the hip, and maybe we have the issue in the hip because of the core or whatever it is. And there's we're doing something that's causing causing issues. So right. um, like when I was working with uh, uh, Ed Kona a few weeks ago, he came out to see me for shoulder issues. But we started going through a lot of it. If you don't know, Ed had a hip replacement right. a number of years ago. And a lot of the issues necessarily weren't necessarily from the hip replacement, but the couple years leading into it. Where he was using a walking you know, all funky, doing all sorts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those like crutches bad. for a little while and stuff like that. So. So that's, you know, that, that's where, you know, that wasn't necessarily the pain that, you know, the pain was in the bad hip, but there was all these compensation patterns that were happening mm -hmm. and now he's experiencing pain elsewhere. Um, so once we started working those issues, all of a sudden the guy's moving around like he's a kid again and, yeah. Yeah. you know, he's all, he's all giddy and jittery yeah. because he's like, I can't believe this is, I move so well. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. He gets, he gets fired up. So you're an inventor, you're an engineer, you're a father, you're a husband, uh, you got a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things going on uh, currently, um, but you know, I, I was really touched when I saw your story on EliteFTS.com uh, a couple months back. Uh, you were talking about how you grew up. Can you share some of that with us today? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it, you know, it's 
and we had this conversation last night, Mark, that the story doesn't isn't who I am today. Right. But I, I like to I'm trying to get better at sharing it because people find it inspiring, right? Right. So um, you don't need this this big backstory to be a phenomenal lifter or right. you know, do things in your life or whatever. Um, because it you know, it all comes down to who you are today. But um, but the story is a good one. Um, so I grew up with some some unconventional parents, and uh, basically, uh, the you know, through high, by the time I graduated high school, I'd lived half my life being homeless. So we 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 basically lived in the woods. There was I was telling you a story yesterday, which we, we missed last night, uh, that missed in the interview yesterday. But uh, uh, you know, there was a time we were it was in Northern California. Uh, we were up in uh, up in the mountains as usual, and there was rattlesnake dens around, so we had uh, lashed up poles into the trees, and we were sleeping up. Uh, Sounds up, terrifying. Up, up, <laughs> up, up, up in the tr- trees to keep yeah. away from the rattlesnakes. My my mom uh, was was pregnant at the time with uh, with uh, with my uh, second uh, oldest sister, and uh, we didn't have transportation because you know we we're just we were just up there, and right. um, she uh, so she ended up having to flag down flagged down a dump truck that was coming out of the mountains. And so she rode in the back of this dump truck, bouncing around all the way down into town to the hospital. Jesus so she got the, the dump truck pulled up to the hospital, and she hops yeah. out of the back of the dump truck and uh, has, her, has our sister gets, uh, I don't know, I don't remember, I was too young, I don't remember how she got back up in the right. mountains, but, you know, she's up there feeding uh, f- feeding my sister, and, right. uh, and uh, there's this rattlesnake coiled up behind her. Jesus. Um, <laughs> Oh my God! So why does it have to be snakes? <laughs> By the way, that's when I was taught to uh, how to how to how to catch and uh, uh, kill rattlesnakes at that age too. So yeah, I can imagine um, the alligator, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, rattlesnake hunter. But uh, there you go. so so yeah, we 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 spent a lot of time. I mean, that was that was our growing up. So you know, there was a lot of uh, poaching of animals and foraging for mushrooms and just very very unconventional uh, living and. Um, we did get taken by the state for a while, uh, spent some time in foster, foster care, and then uh, uh, ended up restarting uh, up in, uh, in Oregon. Um, so we had a year kind of a stability and then kind of fallen back into to old habits. Um, and we ended up back up in the mountains out in eastern Oregon um, doing uh, some mining and logging and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it was just, again, it's, it's, it, is a lot different than I, I think, at least what I see today. Like my, my wife teaches um, uh, in a very poverty driven school, but everybody, like I've gone and spoken to the classes and stuff and they're all dressed nice and doing right. this. I'm like, we grew up, I mean, I was, we wore dirty clothes. You're like, we you had nowhere to poor. wash it. We had, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, once a week we'd be, we'd, we'd fill up our jugs of water in the stream and set them out and on the rocks uh, uh, and heat up right. in the sun and dump it over your, dump it over mm-hmm. your head for your shower. And, you know, during the winter, we'd usually find some houses down in town. Sometimes it was like there was a, a couple of years we all lived in. Um, there was I had three sisters and, and myself, and I've got a brother too, but he wasn't with us at the time. Um, all living out of a 16 foot trailer, um, which if you don't, that's basically about the size of this space here. Right. This is our living space in the dead of winter in Oregon in a couple feet of snow. Usually, I was sleeping in the back of a pickup truck with uh, in the yeah when you were mentioning in a sleeping bag, freezing my ass off. Um, you were mentioning, uh, you know, living in the woods. Uh, were you guys finding some sort of shelter? I mean, it must be cold and rainy and so on, right? So yeah, I mean, a lot of that, a lot of that uh, living in the woods time was during the summer. So we'd be, okay. you know, we'd be in tents, um, or like I said, you know, there was a couple years we had that little trailer, and I was sleeping in the back of the truck through the winters. Uh, during the during the winter, a lot of times we would move into town because you know we're going to school or whatever. But oftentimes it was a place with. You know, no running water, no electricity. Um, like in California, I've got some. I'll have to give you the picture. There's a good one. I want to go back there sometime. But uh, you know, this uh, you know, abandoned houses, things like that. You know, maybe mm-hmm. no. You know, so it was. It, it, it varied around. Right. You know, sometimes they were places that we had were there, electricity. Uh, were there times where you just recognized, like, holy shit, this fucking sucks, or was it just the way you grew up? It was just the way we grew up. It actually wasn't. It wasn't bad. You know, there was nothing. Right. It just. It just was. Um, the, was it a product of a, a compulsion about, like, your parents wanting to be off the grid or s- self-sustainable or what? I mean, they, uh, just out of curiosity. Parents what was, were, were um, 
very intellectual, but just not grasping, you know, not wanting to be part of society for some other reasons that I, I don't think it's appropriate at this time yeah. to get into. Um, but uh, like when we were in Northern California, I mean, that's, you know, they were, we were up in the Trinity Wilderness, which is like uh, right next to Humboldt County, but further in. Is that like so, Shasta? Yeah, yeah kind further of. west, a little bit further west of that. Um, but, you know, you know what people in the Humboldt area do for, for a living, living in the woods, right? Yep. Um, so um, that's, you know, why we were taken by the state. Right. Um, you know, when we moved to Oregon, you know, that ended. And, uh, um, but yeah, there was a lot of drug and alcohol, uh, you know, problems. So it wasn't the best environment. And then in fact, so like I said, uh, you know, I did well in, I was pretty intellectual. I did well in school. Mm-hmm. Um Although I was told I was retarded when I was when I was I don't think I told you that story, Mark. Um, I was held back in in like first or second grade I could, because I could understand because that. I was di- I was different. <laughs> I was told I, was, <laughs> I had learning disabilities and whatnot. Right. But uh, you know, later on, kind of yeah, things changed. Um, Do you think you learned a lot from? I mean, you know, you're, you're living out in the woods. Uh, meanwhile, you know, I'm a fucking fat kid in Poughkeepsie, worrying about what uh, Nintendo video game I'm playing, eat, eating Doritos and stuff like that. Um, you think uh, you living in the woods and growing up in the environment that you grew up in, you think you learned a lot? I think it helped my work, definitely developed my work ethic. I mean, my mm-hmm. parents were always working, um, very manual always stuff. To be done, always right? be, yeah, and and I was always put to work. So, mm-hmm. so. You know, if they were if they were cutting firewood, I was chopping firewood. You know, if they were so your physical training we were, started at four years old. <laughs> yeah, if we were like if that. we were hauling water out to, to remote areas that needed water, I was hauling water out. To, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and you know, when we moved to Oregon, they got into mining. Um, you know, so I was you know I was you know 100 200 pound pack of rocks on my back up the side of a hill. Yeah. You know, day in day out. You know, during the summers. And, and you guys uh, are roughly the same age, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 And uh, so anyway, I, I, when I went to college, you know, things at home really deteriorated. And that's where a couple of years in, um, I ended up taking custody of my three younger siblings and pulling them out of the pulling them out of that environment mm. and uh, ended up raising all them through their teenage years while I finished my in- engineering degree and my master's and kind of fig- sorted things out in my own life as well, um, working through my own little demons and whatnot right. and stuff. So. When you were younger, uh, you know, um, was there ever a time where you, uh, you know, you're at school and, uh, you know, a buddy, you know, invites you over to the house or something like that. And you, you, you go over to their home and you see they have shit's different there. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> so, uh, like, holy shit, you got fucking brownies in the, in the cupboard. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> what I, is this about? That, that happened in, uh, so first grade, I, you know, I started, uh, you know, I made some friends and. One of my friends, I started staying at his house. I'm like, this is awesome. So I just, <laughs> I'm like, every day, hey, I'd walk yeah. up. My parents would come to pick me up, and I'd be like, I'm going to stay at my friend's house. And um, I, I think I started doing that too frequently. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had this thing called Pop Tarts. <laughs> 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 and uh, so actually, it ended up being a, it's kind of a pretty sad story because, you know, I'd stayed at like my friend's house for seven days in a row. And um, uh, my parents, you can't stay there. You know, you've got to come home. And, I don't want to, and I threw a big fit, and um, anyway, uh, that night, um, my friend's house burnt down, and his whole family died. Oh, so, um, so that definitely, you know, combined with the other things helped, you know, I was, I was a very quiet kid, and uh, right. I, I don't think I, my mom says I didn't talk for a year after that. You're so. still kind of weird. I am a little yeah, weird. Yeah. I, Just I, to I, give I, you an I, update. I, 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 so. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that's why we love you here at Super then, Training. <laughs> So, so yeah, that, that pulled on for a few years and then same, th- similar thing happened actually again to me, like, uh, in fifth grade. Um, so this is the year we moved back to, to Oregon and had some stability and it was the year I, I broke, I totally was telling about my arm break story saying, Hey, I broke my arm and went to the nurse. Right. And anyway, yeah. after we got the cast on, after my mom had to actually show up at school and pick me up and take me to the hospital to get the foam reset because they never believed me. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so my friend actually was spent, you know, all, he would do all the transcribing and sit next to me in school every day, writing everything mm-hmm. out for me. And then, then he died. So oh. that was, uh, Shit. yeah. So I had a lot of things like that and 
you know. Is it ever like a driving force behind anything? Uh, you know, your ability, uh, you know, to raise your own children or uh, you knocking out world records and kicking a lot of ass? Is it kind of like a, is it ever a, a statement like, a, you know, just to kind of, uh, you know, uh, pr- prove to yourself almost, you know? Um, poss- I mean, I'm a very driven person and I think that, you know, there's certainly a piece of that that's, that's pulled into that. But, you know, you know, my, my sis, my siblings are not driven in the same fashion I am, but, you know, they've been through the same experiences as right. well. So, and, you know, I've certainly met many other people like yourself that are very driven that don't have that background. Right. right. And so it's certainly something that I can use when I've been in tough situations going, you know, this is nothing. Right. You know, I've, I've been through the fire. Yeah. I've walked through the fire. Um, you know, I've been through more challenging shit than this. Right. Um, but at the same time, you know, like I said earlier, that that story is the past. That's not who I am right. today. And, you know, I know other people that have been strong people in the past. And today they're, you know, 20 years later, yeah, they're weak willed. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, the past is the past. And, you know, what defines you is right now. You are only defined today, right now, this second. And uh, so you've always got to ask yourself, who are you right now? Right. And, you know, anybody, that same question. So you don't need, you know, this powerful backstory or this other. But it's also important to know that, you know, no matter, you can have those challenges and it doesn't have to define you or bring you down either. And I think that's the power of that story. Yeah. But you don't you need that story to say, hey, I don't have that story to be a motivated person. Well, <laughs> right. Fucking bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Right. Whenever so. I talk to people who um, who have, you know, rough rough backstories or they're going through a particularly bad time at the moment and things particularly not their fault just shit happens to them um, i often kind of say like give yourself a point at which you're gonna dismiss yourself from the victim part of this and just say okay that was an experience and be a functioning for human being. being yeah exactly go on and be a functioning human being right. because it's very easy to fall into that victim traps like all this shit happened to me so i don't ever have to accomplish anything because I was, you know, I, I was handicapped from the beginning by this or that or the other thing, you right. know? Exactly. And I think that's, you know, that's something that I've done is I've never been that victim. And like we talked about, like my hand issues earlier, hold me back from the deadlift. That's right. not an excuse. Right. I'm like, I'm always just, how do I figure this out? Do we go to the hook grip? Do I figure out a surgeon? Do I do it? It's like surgeon and long never- thumb. We figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> What you, yeah, I'll get a surgeon. <laughs> He's we got like a hairy, a hair, a big giant hairy ape uh, thumb but, or some shit. You know, there's a difference Sticking between you know stating fact and where you're going. Right. And, um, yeah. Well, yesterday when you came in, you were talking about how it had not been a good day. Now you and I have known each other for for several years, mm-hmm. but we don't talk a lot. You came in and said, you know, I had a, it's been a rough day. I said, well, what happened? And you just laid it out. And you you took responsibility for the things that 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 were your things, and you weren't making excuses for yourself or or the situation or anything like that. You just laid it out, and I thought that is how people need to think more often. Not looking for somebody to blame things on, just just own it and go forward. And it's like, how do I how do I fix it? How do how do I how do I change these behaviors in the future? Whatever you know, whatever it is. I was super impressed by that. Just bowled me over. Oh, thank you. Welcome. I forgot about that. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah I, I, that's you have to always be focused on how you're moving forward. Right. What's the game plan? And you've got to be able to accept. I mean, if you can't take the failures or faults yourself, you're never going to grow. Right. And you know, I joke around a lot in my gym, and people around me that know me, you know, oh, I've, I squat so much because I walk around because I got this big giant ego, you know. Right. But in the end, you know, I, I'm proud of what I've accomplished. So maybe there is some ego there, but at the same time, I'm very open to, to my fallibility, my faults, my failings. And, right. and there's a lot of things I do wrong all the time. And, and I own up to it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one thing that's made me a good leader as well. And, you know, people know that I speak with authenticity in the work that I do, but when I'm at fault, I'll, I'll say, this is, this is me. I'm wrong. And yeah. this is where we're moving. And well, I, and a lot of so. things, to, uh, one thing that people don't understand about being a leader is sometimes you're making a decision based on almost no information and yet a decision has to be made. You have to tell people to do this, that, or the other thing. So, so some of the time you're just going to fucking be wrong. Exactly. And you just have to own it and move on. That's, that's all you can do. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I think uh, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, where can people find you? And uh, also uh, where can people uh, check out more information on your shoulder rock? 
So definitely need to go to kabukiwarrior.com. I've got my blog there. I've got the shop uh, with the uh, um, uh, with the shoulder rock on That's it. That's where you have a lot of your YouTube stuff as well? So there's links to, uh, to YouTube. So uh, my YouTube channel itself is kabuki07. I'm on uh, Instagram at kabuki underscore strong. Twitter, kabuki strong. And... Um, yeah, I think there should be links to all that on uh, on the website. And you're also on Elite FTS, right? I am on Elite FTS. You What's your middle author? name, your favorite color, <laughs> and your favorite song? <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, multiply your hustle, multiply your muscle, and may all your shits be tapered. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell on Twitter and Instagrams. You can find me at uh, Silent Mike with two Ks, and the new sign off is. Stay healthy. Oh, stay healthy. I'm Jim McD. Matt Vincent, he's so stupid, he made that up, so I had to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jim McD, SCTV, everywhere that I would want you to find me. Follow the show on Instagram, at Mark Bell's Powercast. Twitter, at SCJimSack. Facebook.com. Is anybody still listening? <laughs> slash Goddamn. Super Training Jim. And uh, visit the website, supertraining.tv, where you will find videos from... Uh, youtube.com slash supertraining06 and slash supertraining TV. Also, uh, iTunes ratings and reviews. We like those. And thanks so much for hanging in with us for 129.47. Subscribe to Power Magazine at thepowermagazine.com. If you choose the digital edition, you can catch up on all the great back issues, take your training to the next level with slingshot products at howmuchyoubench.net, and look for PSN products including NO Explode at bodybuilding.com. Mark Bell's Powercast is a production of supertraining.tv.